Hey, I'm Guy, and that's John. Yes, it is. Check out the YouTube channel, subscribe, leave a comment, also podcast below in the description. Also down in the description, you can go uh, get your get your face uh, regimen right, geology.com slash ham. Guy, you 40% off. cannot let your significant other outdo you. Being a guy, they have sp- specific moisturizers, face washes for men, geology.com slash ham. Glow up. All right, let's listen Glow to something up. Joel Klatt said. Kind of makes me think Klatt's identified like the secret great skill of Justin Fields. Take a listen. This is what I think goes completely unnoticed when we're talking about draft evaluations is, is generally guys do it all off tape. And if you're just doing it off tape, you lose the feel of the game, right? You lose the op- the opposition's possession. You, you lose what's the feeling in the building. What's like, what's going on that influences the play of the quarterback. And I was always so impressed in person understanding the situations and the feel of the game because I always felt like he had ownership of the game at all times. What do you think about that? It, he actually said when we talked the longer clip, he said in some ways he's a game manager, which is a dirty word, but it's not a dirty word if you've got, you know, Patrick Mahomes is good at managing a game. Uh, it just turns out he's great at other stuff too. Well, I, I, I had said this on the podcast that when I worked in the NFL, it was mandatory if you had a draftable quarterback. I'm not talking – Fields or Herbert or Tua. I'm just talking a guy that you put a draftable grade on. You need to see him live. There was you didn't need to do that with a safety. You didn't need to do that with a guard. It was mandatory that you see him live. And typically, like an executive would meet you at the game, like if he was a fourth or round or higher. Why? Because it's the biggest investment any team makes, right? <laughs> Drafting quarterbacks. It's kind of a big deal, as we all know. It when he talked about that. It reminded me, and you and I have talked about this, because I remember it being a big deal like on social media a couple years ago, Justin Herbert's junior year, Elway was in the house for one of his big games. And it was at the time they needed a quarterback. They, they, they hadn't had Drew Locke yet. And, and then like rumors had come out like, Elway loves this guy. And he ended up going back to school. They had the fifth pick in that draft. They took Bradley Chubb. I think it's safe to say that I would imagine Elway at live at that game was like, fuck this kid. You just see the ball coming out of his, his arm, physical gifts. Elway was probably smitten day one. And now the irony is that guy is in this division and probably going to kick his ass for years, right? I, I, but he just didn't come out. There, you just you have to see these guys live. Not just the way they play, but then what do they do on the sideline? Just what it looks like live. Because when you are a general manager or head coach, you're there live. <laughs> and I think everything gets done so independently in your office with the shades down and the music on and you just with the feet up or the clicker, that's not really the way the real world works because you're on the field with the player. Now it's impossible for the coach during the season to see a player live, right? Unless it's like his bye week and Andrew Luck and your Kyle Shanahan or whatever, right? It's it's a local connection. So I don't depend on them, but the GM definitely like the assistant GM, like someone that's going to pound the table typically goes, why do you think, The stories came out like Adam Peters watching Zach Wilson. I bet Adam Peters, not John Lynch, and obviously Kyle couldn't, saw every one of these top five quarterbacks live this year. Wouldn't you imagine that took place? Yeah. Yeah. Once they were all in. You you know, this is a very – you're not supposed to say this when you grind the tape, John. The all-22 is where it's at. But to me, when I pull out my remote, there's something to be said for the TV copy of a broadcast because the TV copy is how you get – I know we, you know, sometimes we mock the storylines and the narratives and all that stuff, but some of those things are the real things that's going on with a guy. Some of those things are Ohio State is playing Indiana. Indiana's ranked ninth in the nation. Ohio State hasn't played enough games to qualify for the Big Ten title. They need to prove that they belong in the CFP and that they belong in the conference title game. They're going to try and embarrass Indiana. And what happened? They kind of were, and then they forced some plays, and Fields tried to force some plays. And one thing Clyde told us was he learned that lesson in the Northwestern game and really managed that game, checking them into the right one plays, all that. But all of that is part of the – you've said this from day one. We are talking about human beings here. We're not talking about widgets. We're talking about human beings. You can't just go, it failed, let's find the one piece of the engine that broke and replace that piece of the engine. So all of that stuff – the context that he's talking about, which is part of what, when Joel is preparing for a football game, when you're preparing to call a game, yeah, you're watching the film, and yeah, you want to know on third down, where do they like to go, but you also want to know about the human side of what's about to take place. What's going on 
what is the background and the context when you do the open for the broadcast and you go, hi, everybody, I'm Al Michaels. And Chris goes, and I'm Chris Collinsworth. Like, what is important right then about this game? And that is the stuff that matters when you're on the field is what are you trying to accomplish today? It's it's I thought it was great insight from Joel. Well, and, it's why it's why that when we talk about this and all these narratives and talking points that are just getting thrown out. I don't there know why I have a big a deal as a fake microphone when I have an actual microphone. <laughs> <laughs> in the social media sphere and just the media sphere in general, why having the base of what really happened, the teams have the good ones and the ones that have done their work have the real information. And this is where the, the, the there's just like, you, we're all on the same road during the season, right? We're all watching the games. We see a guy playing well, playing, playing poorly, guy injured. We're, we're all thinking the same things while the seasons are going. There's no like, we're actually playing really well. It's like, well, you're one in six. Like, no, the, the, the narratives on the season, there's no fucking such thing as a narrative during the season. You're either playing well, you're not playing well, you're winning games, you're not winning games. There's no now in the off season though, when it's based on stuff that happened, there are. Because like, well, what did that happen? Or you, you just no one really you can't tell me that a guy played well when he just got benched in the third, you know, in the in the first half and didn't come back in the second, you know, second half in a, in an NFL or college game. But that can be you can bring up that. Remember when this happened, you're like, well, did it happen? Well, if you're that's why you have scouts. They're basically detectives that are taking down all this information and GMs and college directors. The coaches are, they're living in their own little bubble during the fall. And so to me, if the Niners take Justin Fields, like Kyle has all this information when he went into it, right? The guy that going into Ohio state, the guy that went into North Dakota state, I guess technically didn't go in, but with, with Trey Lance, it will be hard because he was only the one year starter. He was like, 19 at the time so you probably wouldn't even be thinking about him if you went through north dakota state but justin fields because he's such a blue chip guy you you're probably making some mental notes not even mental like actual tangible notes like oh what's up with this fields guy right you just ask questions about that like when you went into alabama three years ago you're like how about this jerry judy like you i remember i did it when i went to usc like what's up with this marquise lee guy he was like 19 i was the pra- best player of practice you go to alabama sometimes the best player of practice or ohio state or you know any of these schools like what's up with this guy that's why mac jones all of us you were never doing that with mac jones till this year but with justin fields he's such a big time dude you're making notes the bosa brothers like you're there doing are a certain it. level of guys trevor trevor lawrence you would have like, done it at georgia if, if, for justin fields 100%. If I was if I was Clemson's, you know, SEC scout for Team X, I'm asking about Trevor Lawrence by 100% the start of his second season. Like yeah. what's up with this guy? How's he What's he like? Any right? chance he falls what's to us if we're not drafting number 1? The, but um, not even that, but just I'm just saying like what's he really like? What's, what's his football intelligence? Like doing background information on the stuff that you would do in a draft room well before he's available. Cuz that's where the conversation goes to like so what's this guy's really his deal? And that's right. what I would imagine these people have all this information on Justin Fields. What I love about they that. They know stuff like that. What I love about that is that what Clat just described is it's like the least obvious skill, right? Of, of Like it's not the thing we talk about with Fields. We talk about arm strength. We talk about completion percentage. We talk about athleticism. We talk about all this. He loves the game, all that stuff. We don't talk about game managing, right? Oh, taking ownership yeah. of the game was the way Clat put it. Uh, he said he thinks it's overlooked. So he's the guy that watched prepared for 10. He didn't just call 10 games. That means he spent a week going to practice, talking to coaches, talking to players, talking to fields, talking to the other team's coaches. He knows what the other team thought leading up in the week of a game. Know what the other team was trying to do to field. So he has, his, I think he really has as good a context for kind of the two year window of anybody who's talking about Justin's evaluation. Maybe other than Gus John, we should get Gus on to talk about it. Totally agree. 